Get closer to our living planet from our own backyard. Oh, that was one of the most awe-inspiring sights I've ever seen. Kangaroos are the most remarkable of mammals, fast and efficient. Join Brian Cox for his spectacular Australian <laughs> special, Wonders of Life, tomorrow, ABC One. On a day like today, looking out here, you would never, ever want to leave this place. From the stunning Scottish Isle of Skye, one of Kevin's most favourite houses ever. It looks amazing. Don't miss a picturesque new Grand Designs, Sunday 7.40 on ABC One. Good evening. An Australian Navy ship, a customs vessel and a merchant ship have located an asylum seeker boat north of Christmas Island. The vessel sent out a distress call this afternoon and about 80 people are on board. It follows the deaths overnight of four asylum seekers who drowned in rough seas near Christmas Island. More than 140 others were rescued. It the emergencies come as the government considers amendments to the Refugee Convention as part of its new asylum seeker policy. Salary sacrificing companies say changes to fringe benefits tax for car leasing could spell the end for their business. The government has amended the rules to save $1.8 billion as it switches to an emissions trading scheme early. The car industry warns it will lead to further job cuts while salary packaging businesses say they've been blindsided by the changes. And the State of Origin decider is underway at Olympic Park in Sydney with Queensland up 8-0. New South Wales are looking to take advantage of Queensland's poor record in Sydney, but the Maroons are still favourites to win their eighth straight series. It's a sellout with 83,000 fans packing into the stadium. Let's take a look at the weather. A shower or two in Brisbane, 23. Sydney, 23, partly cloudy, while Melbourne, rain developing and very windy, 21. Good night. Please, Australia, put on your slippers, pour yourself a brandy, and prepare yourself for ABC's new sketch comedy. Good evening. Hi. That takes the Mickey out of just about anyone. Beat me and torture me, my lord. If you've got time, I'll never talk. New Wednesday night fever tonight, ABC One. Everyone deserves a second chance. But at what point... If she wants to have a drink, just let her have one. ...is enough enough? Just take it easy. She's done this too many times before. I'm done with her. The Time of Our Lives, Sunday, 8.30, ABC One. tonight the show that refuses to use hotspot technology. <laughs> tonight I'll be joined by comedian Peter Hellier, journalist Carla Grant and the stars of the films Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz and The World's End, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, plus there's musical comedy from The Bedroom Philosopher and a one-on-one -on -one interview with the pin-up boy of science, Brian Cox. <laughs> There are a lot of people excited about Simon Pegg and Nick Frost being on the show tonight. None more so than Jasmine and Leah in the audience. Uh, where are Jasmine and Leah? OK. Uh, Jasmine and Leah were actually in the audience for last week's show, but are such huge fans of Simon and Nick's zombie comedy, Shaun of the Dead, they begged us to let them come back tonight. We said yes on the condition they dressed as zombies for an entire day and brought in the photos to prove it. <laughs> Here is the photo that proves it. <laughs> Uh, they're not the only blood-covered people back from the dead to post photos online this week. Check out this guy. 
Yes. That was posted by Kevin Rudd after he cut himself shaving. I'm not sure what he tweeted to go along with that. Oh, look, I cut myself shaving. Hashtag not really a robot. <laughs> if Tony Abbott had been on the ball, he would have responded with, if it bleeds, we can kill it. <laughs> and look, while we're talking political selfies, check out this photo of Clive Palmer that we spotted on a local billboard this week. Tell me, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> He's Y-shaped. <laughs> According to the actual photo of Clive Palmer, he's more of an A-frame. <laughs> Basically, Clive Palmer has done what every teenage girl on the planet has done at some stage. Take the photo from above to make yourself look slimmer. <laughs> and the giveaway is, look at the photo again. How big are his hands? <laughs> Either that's taken from above or Clive Palmer is the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> Selfies hit the news this week, partly because of a news selfie that did the rounds of a well-toned rugby league footballer by the name of George Burgess. We are not going to show you that photo. Aww. However... <laughs> the people that are going, ah, have probably seen it already, I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, we will, however, show you this selfie of Wheel of Fortune host John Burgess. <laughs> Look, apparently sexy selfies are becoming a popular thing amongst teenagers. And what you do is you upload a hot photo of yourself and the more people that like that photo, the more popular you are. Now, this scares me for two reasons. One, when I was a teenager, a selfie was something you did without a camera and hoped no one saw. <laughs> you certainly didn't want any of your friends to like it. But secondly, I don't want my daughter growing up looking for self-esteem through the back end of an iPhone. Besides, anyone in a relationship knows, sometimes your partner looks their sexiest when they're sitting on a couch in a pair of tracky dacks watching an old episode of MASH. So I'd like to institute the daggy selfie. I think people should upload photos of themselves, warts and all. In fact, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> That's a shadow, not a stain. <laughs> Let's get on with the show and welcome the woman who's up for anything but often falls down while doing it, Hannah Gadsby. Look at this. Uh, what's that? I ran over a teddy on the way in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, waste not, want not. <laughs> what have you had to go out this week? Singing. Is this a long-held dream? Well, no, because I haven't sung since I was about 12 when my brothers recorded me trying to sing the Beach Boys' Kokomo. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I was so distressed after that that I haven't sung since. Wow, OK, yeah. so how did it go this week? Well, let's have a look. <laughs> I love singing. Unfortunately, my voice sounds like Godzilla farting. <laughs> I'm here with musical theatre star Sylvie Palladino to bridge the gap between my love of singing and the war zone coming out of my yeah. mouth. Yeah. First up, Sylvie assesses my instrument. I dreamed a dream <laughs> when dream time gone by. <laughs> Sylvie can tell a diamond in the rough when she hears one. Quite a unique sound. <laughs> Back against the wall. I need to stand so my body is active. Apparently, the blood flow in this position can sometimes lead to blackouts, which isn't going to happen. <laughs> no. The trill. Then you warm up your facial muscles, and things get a lot uglier before they get better. Try not to spit when you do that. Ah, oh, souls. Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good one, that one. <laughs> I don't know if I'm preparing to sing or for my first sex tape. <laughs> Maybe I can be on your next CD with you. Oh, God. There's no way she's ever going to sing. Just a, a bit lower. Right, and... Uh... It's been four hours now and she is just... Oh. <laughs> okay, that sort of sounds like a frog, um, but the worst student I've ever had. Just... Oh. I can't. While what Sylvie rushes off to get oh. me a record deal, I'm left to hone my gift, my song for the nation. I, 
I don't want to go too harsh too early on your singing abilities. <laughs> is it possible you just haven't found your genre yet? Ooh, running out of genres. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've set up a challenge for you tonight. If you'd like to make your way over to that microphone, I'm going to throw some speed karaoke at you. Oh, I've never done anything speedily. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw a whole bunch of uh, different genres at you. You just have to start singing. Can we have the music, please? Oh. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet you bought a dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Try another shot. Can we go to another genre, please? Maybe a bit of rap. And by the way, Hannah, I, I do have a buzzer. I do have a buzzer. So we're touch it. Oh God. I'm gonna have to touch it at some point. Get touch it. My 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 music hits me so hard, makes me want to say, Oh my lord, thank you for blessing oh me with a mind that rises to have been good. You know, it's been an old dumb boat, an old town of his known as such. You can't touch. The buzzer's not working. <laughs> Can someone help me with the buzzer, please? I played with your heart. Oh, God. Got lost in the cage. Oh, baby, <laughs> baby. <laughs> it's been seven hours and 15 days. Really? Because it feels Since a lot longer. Since you took your love away. <laughs> the that love is not coming back. I've gone out every night and slept all day. Yeah, it, it sounds like you've just woken up. Since you took your love <laughs> away. Well, what have we learnt from that, Hannah? <laughs> Don't encourage your children that they can do anything they want <laughs> if they just set their mind to it. Because my mind was on that. <laughs> and at the very least, you had a go. Ladies and gentlemen, Hannah Gadsby. <laughs> my first guest tonight is an avid Collingwood fan who was a regular on a TV footy show and carved out a successful radio career. To narrow it down, he's the one that can pronounce the word millionaire. Please welcome Peter Hellyer. <laughs> Peter Helly and Ellison, how's your family? They're good. Yeah, they're good. No, they're, 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 they're good. I've got three boys. Uh, you know, they're, they're ten, eight, and four. Do your do your kids find you funny? Uh, they used to. Um, <laughs> and then I, I made a mistake. What I, I didn't want to do like dad jokes. You know, dad jokes. You know, you drive past a cemetery. You know, people are dying to get in there. I, you know, yeah. and uh, you know, when your kid says, oh, "Hey, dad, I'm hungry." Hey, hungry, I'm dad. Um, <laughs> I did that for a little while, but then I yeah. thought I want to step it up another level. So one Saturday morning, I'm in the, I'm in the kitchen and I'm uh, making breakfast. I'm making bacon. And the kids come in, what's for breakfast? And it occurs in my head, I go, hang on, bacon? Rhymes with bacon. Wow. So I do something out of that no white father should ever do in front of their kids. <laughs> yeah. I start rapping. I start <laughs> rapping. And it was a pretty good rap. I just went into it straight away. Just, I'm making bacon. I ain't faking. Who's up for the taking? Ooh, I'm shaking. These are the cakes I'm baking. These are the steaks I'm staking. And these are the eggs I'm breaking. Because they compliment the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gotta say, my kids did not react like that. Like, <laughs> they were horrified. They were like, oh, and, and walked out of the room. I was so addicted. I did this seriously for six months. <laughs> Until my wife had, a, she had an intervention. She sat me down and said, Petey, um, you need to stop rapping. Um, <laughs> it's created a gulf between you and your kids. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they don't like you anymore. <laughs> Stop it. And I said, OK, OK, I'll stop it. But one more. Can I do one more? And it was a Wednesday night. The kids came out. They're like, good night, Dad. And I'm like, hey, good night, good night, kids. And hey, guess what I'm doing in the morning? And by this stage, it's been six months of this. Oh, what? Oh, well, I said, don't be like that. 
you don't know what it is. You know, and now because you have an attitude problem, you, you might be saying something really cool. And they're like, oh, OK, sorry, sorry, Dad. What are you doing in the morning? <laughs> I'm making bacon. I am making stuff for the taken. Like, it was amazing. But then what happened, this is why I love my wife so much. We've been married 10 years this year. She, my wife can actually hold a note, OK? She actually walks into the room without telling me she's going to do this. She walks into the room and she starts harmonising to the making bacon rap. <laughs> yes. She's like, he's making bacon. <laughs> You should have seen the look in my kid's face. The one person in the world they trust implicitly. They hate me by now, but they, they love her. They're like, no, not you. He's a dickhead. Not you. <laughs> oh, by the way, every time I say I did a making bacon wrap over those six months, I'm not actually making bacon for them every single time. There's no cholesterol issues because of my hijinks <laughs> <laughs> in, in my family. So the next morning I say, OK, uh, sweetie, we only do one more thing, OK? In the morning... Just go with me. The kids get up, they're like, hey, kids, morning, and they're, hey, Dad. I go, oh, wow, this is pretty exciting. We got a phone call after you guys went to bed last night. Um, wow. Um, your principal rang, Principal Phil. And, um, <laughs> you know that school assembly you have on this morning? <laughs> <laughs> they want Mummy and Daddy to rap. <laughs> Oh, YOLO. Um, <laughs> and the, the, the twist of this tale is that, like, the only other time I've spoken about this was on a radio station. OK, so I'll tell you, there was a female skewed radio station, so I, I told this story about its kids and making bacon and rap and all that. And on that same day, uh, they pre-recorded it in the morning, went to air in the afternoon. My older son, Liam, was coming home from an excursion <laughs> at Federation Square. <laughs> Guess what radio station they were listening to? <laughs> Daddy wins again. <laughs> And now you've got a new show coming out on the ABC. Yeah, called yeah. It's a date. It's a date. It's, I'm really excited and really proud of it. It's something a bit different. Um, it's it's all about it's a scripted comedy. Yeah. Um, and it's all about dating. Each episode has two different dates. And there's a question at the top of each episode, like, should you have sex on the first date? How important is a sense of humour? And these two dates will kind of intercut and look at these this question from different points of view. And right. it's an amazing, like, we had an amazing cast. Each, each week's a different cast. Right. So I think we, it was a, we had 140 actors over eight, eight episodes. Um, so you'll see people like uh, John Wood on a date with Denise Scott, um, <laughs> Asha Ketty with Steve Curry. Uh, um, my favourite one, I think, is Ross Noble on a date with Ian Smith, Harold from Neighbours. <laughs> Wow. And we, now we've got footage of the, of the episode where you're on a date with Lisa McCune. Yes, I'm on a date with Lisa McCune. We, we go to a Mexican restaurant. She's trying to get a bit saucy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a bit more reluctant. There you are, folks. Mm. Mm. Um, I ordered nachos. That is nachos. A yeah. crispy, crispy shell with the... Tacos? Um, I um, was wondering, is the... Um, um, the correct pronunciation of Mexico, is it Mexico or is it Mexico? Oh. It's OK, sir. I can just it's... take these back and swap them for you. Thank you. What was that? Turn to me. No. Please. Is that based on a real life experience? No, not 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 that one. I haven't uh, kicked anyone there. Uh... <laughs> so you've made this series about first dates. Yes. How did you meet your wife? Oh, that's it's quite a story actually. I was coming home. Uh, I was at the airport in Sydney. Mm. I was coming home from doing a gig up there, and I she was sitting across from me at the uh, airport terminal, terminal number two at Sydney Airport. Yep. And um, and she was reading a book, and I thought she looked really she was beautiful, and um, I thought I should speak to her. A conversation, and then I remind myself that I don't do that. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I thought, well, come on, you should. You know, she's reading a book, and she's she's wearing glasses. She looks smart and beautiful. Wow, that's an amazing combination. And then I thought, well, her boyfriend will be waiting for her in Melbourne. It'll be embarrassing and awkward. Right. Uh, she'll like, probably run to him and go, save me from that guy. <laughs> um, and 
we got on the plane, saw where she sat. I was just like, oh, she's... And, uh, and she got home. Her parents picked her up with her grandmother. And I'm like, oh, what a nice girl. And she went off and I went off. And I kind of kept on... Th I thought, I should have said something. I should have said something. Three days later, I'm at the Prince Pat in Melbourne uh, doing a gig. I see a friend of mine at the bar. She's talking to this girl. And I walk up and it's her. And I'm like, do you... Were you at Sydney? Were you in Sydney on, on Thursday? So she's the creepy one. She was. <laughs> we often have this debate: who stalks who? It, it's and, and I said, um, uh, were you in Sydney on Thursday? She goes, no, I wasn't. I said, oh, that's weird because you look exactly like somebody I saw at Sydney Airport. And then she, about a minute later, she said, actually, sorry, I was. I was coming back from Japan. I had to stop over in Sydney at the airport. And I went, yeah, I, you, you, you're you. I, I, and you, and you. I said you were wearing a grey kind of tracksuit top. <laughs> Too much information, Adam. <laughs> that was a little bit too much. I should have yeah. just held back a bit and played. But I invited her to my party. We had a dance floor patch, and uh, and that was that. That was the most romantic story ever until the words dance floor patch. <laughs> it's the name of my new album. <laughs> <laughs> so what is what is your parents' relationship like? They're, they're good. They've been retired for a long time. Um, and they play golf and they travel and they fight. And um, Do you yeah. learn from them? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you have to. Uh, they're, they're, they were great parents, uh, really good parents. So whenever I do, if I don't ask, I, I very rarely ask them, like, how do I do this? Like, but I yeah. think about what they would do. Because well, like, here, here's the thing. Your TV series on the ABC is about first dates. Yes. And you are in the middle of a relationship and it's going quite well. But I wanted to get Wait, to... Wait so you're saying oh, I'm in the middle. So you say my marriage is going to end You've in You've only got years. another 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> Who have you been talking to? Uh, my wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, funny, I was in Sydney <laughs> Airport over the weekend. <laughs> um, you're in a, in a relationship that's going strong. Yes. Um, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to get, you know, some more experienced advice on okay, relationships. Yes. Yes. So during the week, I sat down with about five couples. Yes. Uh, all a bit more experienced in relationships. The first of which are your parents. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I fired a few questions yeah. at them, and here's what happened. Bill and Helen, thank you for having a chat to me today. How did you meet? Uh, through a youth group. Yeah. YCW youth yeah. group. Okay. As, as, yes, uh, we agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Is this whole interview just going to be Helen answering questions? And Bill <laughs> Bill. Going, yep, yep, what she said. See, I was lasted 44 years. <laughs> Was it love at first sight? Uh, I'll go first this time. <laughs> um, no, 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 because I don't even know the first time. It was bitterly cold and she was wearing a skirt and a lace top. And she said, oh, cold. And I put my hands on her shoulders. And there was a little spark. And I needed a partner to take to a dinner dance for my brother's 20th birthday. 19th birthday. 20th because I was 22. <laughs> no, 23. Oh, sorry, you're right. It's only oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> She sat on my knee for some reason. Well, I don't know what it was, and I'll tell you what. I, <laughs> I don't I've remember never, that. I've never forgotten it. <laughs> Hiked to Sydney one school break and um, fell in love in Sydney. And people were saying things like, "Oh, give it two weeks; those two will never Everyone last." <laughs> and uh, here we are. Yeah. How long have you been married? Let's see if he remembers. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. At 65, we got married, didn't we? Yeah. Well, you added up. Yeah. <laughs> and how did you propose? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go and ask a father. It was I in those see. days. And no, her father was a principal of a school. They used to scare hell out of me. <laughs> school teachers at any time, but he was a principal. It was August we roughly started going out together. And December? And by December, I thought, this is it. And so yeah. I said, would you marry me? And she said, yes. Was it a big romantic proposal? No. no. <laughs> what annoys you most about each other? Oh, now, this is a list. Do you want to listen to <laughs> uh, Anthony can be a little untidy sometimes. Oh, yeah. He's uh, oh, personal so. hygiene and his dress sense and that. Maybe he's a little too tidy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, his dress sense is terrible. <laughs> what annoys me most about Stan 
is he snoring at night? What annoys you about him? Oh, absolutely nothing. <laughs> and that's how it lasted 44 that's years. That's how it lasted 44 years. <laughs> What's the secret to keeping a relationship strong? I think that anything worthwhile is worth sticking to. We both have put too much into this and, um, and we love each other and we're very happy and Mm. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. Yeah. Don't you, darling? Oh. Sense of humour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sense of humour. Sense big. of humour. Big. I think a lot of give and take. You've got to be a bit tolerant. You got <laughs> no, you do. Yeah. It's more than just that first flush of love. Yeah. It it grows. If there's one thing you could change about each other, what would it be? No, I wouldn't like to change anything. I wish he'd kept his hair. <laughs> Is there anything you'd change about Jean? I'm the richest man in Melbourne. <laughs> the only thing I think I would change um, is that we could get married. Where do you think you'd be if each other hadn't come along? I don't know that I could be as happy with anybody else. Goodness knows. No, gosh, it'd be a sad life, oh, I think. I don't know, yeah. A day doesn't go, go past when he doesn't tell me that he loves me. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> And finally, do you have a special song that's your song? Well, not really, do we? Uh, no. <laughs> really? Oh, not really. <laughs> this is it. This time I know it's the real thing. I can't explain what I'm feeling. I'm lost for words. I'm in a place. Stunned and amazed by your love and ways. <laughs> Could it be Camper? Some dust in the studio. Yeah. In my eye. I should point out since that interview um, was recorded a couple of days ago, my parents have divorced. Uh, <laughs> was it weird watching your parents talk? You about feel them? really vulnerable when you see, you know, because I kind of agreed to, to do what I do for a living many years ago, and, and you know, I, that wasn't part of the, the deal to bring my family along, really. So it's weird. Mum did uh, an episode of Row. We did a, a Mother's Day special where all the mums came on. So Dad's always had this thing, and you know, he always goes, "Is there anything?" Anything for me to do anytime soon? <laughs> <laughs> but you, they rang me on the way home going, oh, I think it went well. That, they said it went well, but they say that to everyone, don't they? Do they say that to everyone? <laughs> <laughs> um, your show, It's a Date, starts August, uh, 15. August 15 yep. on the ABC at 9 pm. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Pete Hallier. Yeah. Thank you. My second guest tonight is the host of the SBS.